And here we go. Welcome again. We got another episode of Cardboard Conversations. As always, it's Saturday night. It's Bob. It's Pat. It's us and it's you. So thank you everybody for joining. You know, we got a, a blue theme going on tonight, even though both of us are uh, actually finding some really good themes, not just in magic, but in gaming at large. And that's kind of the, um, you know, aim for tonight's podcast is talking about finding a gem in your category, whether it's in magic, whether it's in a new medieval city builder, or if you're getting to a roguelite, you know, finding the thing that works just for you is kind of a, a hard thing nowadays. You know, Bob, both of us pay attention a lot to gaming news and, you know, previews and reviews coming out for games. And a lot of times listening to other people's opinions and on stuff mm -hmm. is not always the right way to go. You know, you got to find your, your own taste and stuff nowadays. Well, it's, it's just like movies or art or anything else, you know, that, that the, the fun or the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Mm. Hey, yo, what's up, dual brain. Hey, hey. And I, I think that that's important to recognize when you, when you're talking to others, there was somebody who gave me a bunch of guff saying that <laughs> I was, I was, I was making a funny on one of Jake and Joel's, um, streams or uh, videos lately and i was just being sarcastic as hell and then he said wait aren't you the guy that was pushing mystery boosters because it was a good investment and i'm like i i don't ever recall strictly like pushing most yeah. mystery boosters and then he says aren't you the one that was also selling 250 dollars packs on mm. ebay and i'm like well clearly if you've been if you've been watching me at all and if you're watching now mm. I don't sell anything like right. Nothing. Yeah. Like that's what I'm known for. Matt, Pat, they'll sell shit. I yeah. don't sell a damn thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and as always, like anybody out there, Pat has a video out there. I highly suggest that if you want to get the gist of this channel, you watch his shorts, really yeah. short, short. I don't know shit. He don't know shit. You don't know yeah. shit. Nobody knows shit. Nobody knows that's anything. The way it goes. Yeah. And, 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 if you're taking the word of people online as gospel to invest or spend your money, you should probably reevaluate your decision-making process. Now taking what, what <laughs> patent shorts, there we go. Um, now, now taking what we say and digging into things yourself, which I have always since day one recommended, don't trust me. Don't trust Pat. Don't trust Matt. Don't trust Rudy. Don't trust anybody. Go do your homework. Now, if we reveal some information that sounds rational, you should look into it. Plot it out. Chart it out. Write it down. And I'm a big proponent of, of patience um, in a time of, of FOMO. You know, this is a lot of FOMO to push products of all kinds. You know, oh, you're going to miss out. Don't miss out. You'll miss the, the wave. If you start playing Power World right now, you're probably <laughs> going to run into a ghost town, you know. Yeah, well... It it's funny you mentioned that, um, how hype some games were and how quickly that, um, you know, <laughs> market share drops right off. It's it's phenomenally interesting seeing that same thing in Magic releases. You know, a new set comes out, drops right off. Um, same thing with some multiplayer games. They come out and drop right off, but... It's great to see some other things stay around for years and years, you know, Destiny and its incredible length and Fortnite as well. Um, as gross as their Minecraft things are. Yeah, I mean Minecraft. Jeez Louise. I saw a truck. I saw a truck, a brand new truck, probably a eighty five thousand dollar truck that had a personalized license plate that said M N E M N E Craft and you know, Minecraft. And then he had a yeah. Minecraft license plate holder on his you know mega oh, expensive yeah. lifted truck and i'm like good lord so i mean that, that you know those there's there are games that stick around and a lot of people when it first came out especially when it first came out if anybody here remembers yeah. it got shat upon by everybody oh the graphics are so yeah. terrible it's such was limited gameplay people. yeah it was, um, everybody was shitting on it everywhere you could turn and lo and behold yeah it's it's it, it, it's you know part of americana now really it's, it's absolutely it's, you know kate will that. dress up as steve the main character or one of those creepers for halloween um it, it's definitely in 
it, as you said, cultural Americana at this point. It's part of like American society. Kids run around and it's generational at this point because of how low the entry bar is for age to get into it. You know, it's not like Hell Divers 2. That's definitely a a mature game. You know, it's it's aimed at a different audience. It's not exactly a family friendly game. You're gonna hang out with everybody on the couch and play together. And I, I just want to say this for everybody that's listening or tunes in afterwards, you know, it's okay for you to like what you like. You know, if if you like what what the hell is that card? I hate the art on so much. Faithless looting from Strixhaven. <laughs> God, I hate the art on that card. And if you love that, God bless you. Go buy a bunch of them. I bought the card behind me. Tons of them recently. I don't know. Probably bought like 40 copies of it in the last, I don't know, three years. Just because I like it. I mean, I bought the OG one. The the the, the Ice, Ice Age. Age. Yeah. Because back in the day, it was, you know, the hot card. I love the art on it. It just, it, it, it appeals to me. Is it, it a good financial cool. investment? Yeah. No. Is it a good card? I think absolutely. Well, I mean, if you don't like making friends, if you want some salt to hit the table, yeah. yeah. But I don't understand why it doesn't hit more on the table because it's it can be brutal. Selecting yeah. three cards specifically before somebody can dig for them out of their deck and remove them from the game. That's pretty healthy in a commander game. You could take out yeah. key pieces that get rid of their infinite combos. You know, yeah. Or the things that are make your deck neutered. And then if you can recur oh, that yeah. thing out of your graveyard, whew. Yeah, I mean, if I was playing Slivers and you were to throw that on and just go and get five of the biggest, baddest Slivers that were my second, third, fourth, fifth best cards and, you know, drop them into the bin. That's just, that's not nice. That's that's very yeah, you're good. Not, you, you would yeah. feel like, oh, well, there, go, there goes that. Mm -hmm. Or somebody who's relying on pillow forting and board wiping and you take out three of their board wipes. Right, yeah. That, that's yeah. going to make their deck probably far less effective. <laughs> And Ed, I, I love your comment there. If you want to bring that up, um, yeah, you know, hearkening back to you know, don't listen to me, don't listen to you. I, I don't mean don't listen at all, mm -hmm. but you should be making your decisions based off of your own personal education on a topic. Right. You should Whether listen. It, you shouldn't just fervently believe what other people are saying, unless you're at our twenty dollar tier, and then we give you fiduciary. No, I'm I'm just screwing. <laughs> well, we do we do have the option if you want to talk with us. Uh, they they arm wrestled me for um, you know offering something of, of of value that you can get one on one time with me and I'll walk you through things. I'm a very methodical kind of person and I'll walk you through all of my thoughts on on something, how I got there, where I looked, why do I believe that way, uh, and we can have a one on one discussion rather than just you know posting things in chat or in a in a forum. And and just like Dual Brain, I think we have a kinship, Dual Brain and I, where we like to. We like to educate a bit. You know, that means that we give information and we give our opinions on that. We opine, folks. People just, I, it's like, oh, he said it. He thinks it's fact. No, most people, most of the time, give their opinions on things. They're not, they're not speaking as a subject matter expert on things, even at work. At right. the, you know, people ask me questions all the time about things because I'm somewhat knowledgeable about a whole lot of different things. But I'll tell them I'm not the SME for this. I'm not I'm not the subject matter expert. Here's my opinion on how I think it works. I could yeah. dig in, take a look at it. But everybody hey, needs up, to take yeah, account yeah. accountability for their own decisions. Oh, absolutely. You pull yeah. the trigger for everything. And Ed, to speak to that, you know, an educated market being good for people at large is why unions I are agree. so powerful. You know, I don't think the, it's good for Watsi at large, but I think yeah, it's good for yeah. you all as as game players to be as educated as possible about everything. Mm. That way you don't it, it cuts down on the feel bads. Do you feel is mm. does it take some of the mystique away from it? Sure, to an extent, just like Christmas, you know, uh, and, and, you know, when you open that gift, it takes away the mystique of what's in what's in the box. Um but being educated and knowing what's in the box, that's that's kind of uh, important. And if, if you are getting good at being able to guess what's in the box before you open it, um, I think in the long run, you'll be happier. You know, if, if you're more aware of what you're doing in magic and why you're doing it, that's another huge part that I just don't really know how to get across to people. I try my best. That it's very important, whether it's magic or a video game, because how many people out there buy video games that they play twice? 
Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that sucked Definitely. I didn't do the research into it. I didn't wait. I had to be yeah. there on day one release Diablo four looking at you and <laughs> so, drop a hundred yeah. bucks. I you, if I knew what it was, was like, uh, never would have bought Diablo four for a hundred bucks. Yeah. I was uh, looking through my steam library and I saw one game that I want to say I had played for like four hours and it was just a travesty to see that as part of the record. If it wasn't a game I bought within the last week, playing four hours of it feels like I wasted money, um, which is probably one of the reasons why I like Game Pass so much is because you get access to so many games at a monthly fee. Similar to Netflix, you can really ramp up your consumption if you got the time and ability for it. I wish Magic had a, had a Game Pass. <laughs> or I could try a set and go, nah, nah. And Richie says Diablo 4 was a sad buy. I, I well, think it was for a lot of people, Richie. I'll be honest with you. It, now it's on Game Pass. You know, to really nail that uh, coffin closed is that that feels bad right there is part of like buying stuff nowadays you know i think ubisoft said something in an interview one of their ceos or cfos that ownership is going to be a, a thing of the past a relic and it's tough with magic the gathering and other trading card games board game <laughs> where it's a physical item you know that's that's tough well you didn't spend any time with me dual brain on diablo I'm still down, and sorry, Richie, that I haven't been keeping up with you, DJ. Yeah, that's a spirit shield, not that hard to come by. Um, it, it and and I, I, you know, I, I understand what you what you're saying there, there, Pat. That that ownership, you know, having cartridges where you used to have to own the physical disc, or right, yeah, you know, that that's not a thing in the past. But that's there's there's something to that that maybe the collector in me that enjoys that aspect with board games. The um, that yeah. ownership idea of it where you have yeah, that I have it. Yeah. You know, and, when, I, when the power goes out, when the internet's yeah. out, I can whip that sucker out with a candle and yeah. Play with well, I guess that's that's how I am with books. Um, I actually have a, a surprisingly avid collection of books for myself. Um I think at this point I'm oh, at yeah, books is another one. I, <laughs> unlike Donald Trump, I actually do own multiple Bibles. Like it's <laughs> <laughs> but um, but I, yeah, I like you know, I like hardbound books. You know what I mean? There's just something about having the hardbound book that, and I like keeping the the, the dust yeah. jackets on them too. I like keeping them in good condition. So it always bothers me. Like if I if I loan a book to somebody and it comes back and the dust jacket's all bungled up, and I'm like, yeah, uh, yeah, because uh, they know, don't they don't see the value. In it. And I like having the book in pristine condition, even with the dust jacket. It's one of the few good habits I, I learned from my mother was an avid love for reading. And um, it, just little personal memory. I remember when I was about 12 or 13, my mother would nice. take me to the college campus so that we could trade in books at a, a local bookstore on campus there. And I could dive through and get all these secondhand books I never would have been exposed to if it wasn't for her or that special place and time. Because nowadays, nobody does something like that. As more and more libraries close down, it's just something very unlikely for someone to occur is to go for a, a nice weekend uh, day at the, the bookstore. Yeah. Well, to be fair, though, we have way more entertainment options nowadays than what you had, you know, 40, 50 years ago. And, and access uh, to, you know, um, I use a site called um, uh, Project Gutenberg. I'll actually link it down in the description here in just a moment. And so many things are in the public domain. This is actually 100% uh, free and um, uh, all legal because it's public domain books. And you can read I think it's over a million words, uh, 10,000 different books, classics, I, Odyssey. I don't, um, I don't dig reading know. digitally, though. Like, there's something that just, I don't know. Doesn't I, quite maybe because I'm out. so old, it doesn't, it doesn't scratch the itch of reading a book. I get that. Yeah. There's something just about, you know, me laying on my belly in bed next to a window and just having a good book sprawled out in front of me. 
Yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, scrolling on a, a, a tablet doesn't quite feel the same. No. I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's the tactile experience of something to touch and smell. Uh, um, compared to, you know, the digital experience, which feels more antiseptic, more sterilized, more sterile. At any rate, though, if, if that's what you enjoy, though, you know, right. according to the, to the theme of tonight's show, you should enjoy that. Yeah. You know, if you like audiobooks, I tried that. Couldn't get into it either. Mm. Um, you know, find your happy. You know, do do you do you and, and don't let people bully you mm. um, into having to, to drink the Kool-Aid. You know, you, you, you can, you can be content doing the things that tickle your own fancy. And I'll tell you what, as you get older for the younger folks out there, yeah, you give a shit less and less about what people think <laughs> <laughs> you really do. Yeah. Um, or at least I do. I, my care factor for what other people mm. think about me or what I do is generally low now i still but i mean to that extent it's not do i care less completely i like to feel like people um i don't want to say respect what i'm saying but appreciate what i'm saying and appreciate the time that i'm taking to to do the things in public that i do the, the well, sitting in everybody's channels and chatting and yeah. doing this every saturday certainly to to give you credit for a well-formed well-formed opinion whether or not it's something they agree with uh that's a whole separate thing but to appreciate in a debate instead of turning it into an argument or a yelling match to realize that the other person is coming from a place of you know genuineness and um th that it's always meant well whether or not it's <laughs> palatable is something different yeah, I'm, you know, I, I think what we see so often is that people are so quick to form an opinion and then voice that opinion mm -hmm. uh, in today's world, especially with the Internet, without giving things, uh, you know, the, the time to hey, gestate. What up, Colin? Thanks again. For coming over your head. Great to have you. I generally do not like to be on the spot to have to come up with something. I like to have time to think about it, mull it over, extrapolate. Mm -hmm you know, kind of, kind of run through some scenarios in my mind about things. They do it to me all the time at work and it drives me absolutely bonkers, you know, cause I'm, cause I probably sound pretty dull witted and slow in my response because I just don't put me on the spot right now. Not that I'm nervous, but I don't have a fully formed thought. I like to take time to think about things. And then I like to take time to go out and check other people's opinions because you can learn a lot from even the dumbest people out there even if it's not what yeah. you expected to learn. It, it's it's funny you mentioned that. Um, somebody I listened to a lot, um, he was a, a, a speaker for a number of years, Jim Rohn. And one of the things he talked about was that one thing we're lacking greatly in society is books or movies written about people that have really screwed things up. People who have royally messed up their own lives over and over and over, who've made every mistake. Because they can teach you as much as the millionaire who's done it all right over and over. That there is much to learn from somebody that is sleepy in the gutter versus the person sleeping in the penthouse. And I think that one of the things that's really lacking on YouTube is just that. is It's always success stories. Same things with social media at large. Is Most often it's... I. I am sitting on somebody's Bugatti and taking pictures of myself and showing, oh, what a wonderful car this is versus, hey, look at my broke ass Honda Civic thing gets me around. People aren't well, humble enough. Yeah. Well, that's that's true. And I, I could probably be lumped into that category. Uh, you know, there, there was a saying. Um, which I think humility and wisdom kind of go hand in hand. And they say that uh, uh, dumb people wish pray to be smart. Smart people pray to be wise. And wise people pray to be patient. Um, 
Wise people pray to be what? Patient. Patient. So there, there's a, a thing there along with humility. And I often question right. some of the but things that I do right. on a daily basis because you know, I, 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 I can get quickly intolerant of, of people um, of stupidity. You know, especially yeah. when I'm I'm yeah. at a task and I have to get a task done, my yeah. tolerance for stupidity is really low. Like, yeah, I yeah, no, I done. feel that. Um, you know, and, I work and, in the DMV, so it can definitely be a very uh, time intensive uh, it, job where things have to happen really quickly. And when you see somebody at a copying machine, just Fucking it up. It's really hard to stop You're it. hitting the fax button, lady. Stop hitting fax. You need the copy. Wait, what blows my mind is people don't realize you can put more than one thing on the copier at a time. You can like put Tetris that shit together and now it's all on one page and you just saved like 30 seconds. You do that 30 times a day. That's 900 seconds. Like get the fuck out of here. Like but uh, you know, e even even if I am correct that they're being stupid, um, I'll often sit back and go, "Well, that wasn't very humble of you to think that that person's stupid." Right. Yeah. So I, there, there's there's a constant yeah. battle of you know getting things done. There's functionality that has to be done, and you know being patient with. Perhaps they weren't stupid. It's just part of their learning process. Unless I see them do it over and over again, then I'm perfectly fine calling them stupid. <laughs> That's I'm an like, idiot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you keep sticking your finger in the light socket and going, ow, you know, then then stop it. Yeah. Don't do that. And I mean to to circle back a bit to um Wizards of the Coast is them reprinting over and over and over. That's and the finger in a light socket, man. So much and negative feedback series after set after mistake is they're getting a lot of negative feedback from the market at large saying that this is not something we want but i think one of the things that offsets that is people's purchase of the products is those reprints are something people are chasing after and i think to speak to that one thing i look forward as a metric is if we get any numbers for the Fallout secret layers coming up, where Mono Vault is one of the um, special secret cards that could be in one of those special um, secret layers. If it is really, really sought after, even after it closes, if people are really jonesing for it, I think that just goes to further proof that people are really speaking with their wallets more so than the community backlash if people keep buying these products then they need to just shut well, the heck up. i mean I, I'll, I'll be honest it's something that I've, I've been struggling with quite a bit um and that's how well the market is is doing despite rational charting of of, of card values it, <laughs> it doesn't make sense and something has distinctly changed i've noticed that when you used to open Magic or any TCG, you were very excited about opening the hot hit cards mm. because it's something you were putting in your binder to use, to collect, whatever. Now it it's like, yeah, I got a hot hit heart, a card, and uh, how quick can I get it to market before it goes down? Right. And so right. I think everybody, whether they say it or not, understands what's happening to all card values. Mm. Like this is a, 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 an acknowledgement by action, I guess you could say, rather than by voice, is that Watsi is draining the value of all cards by this accepted reprint policy. And it really doesn't benefit people. And, and more so coming in, in, in the next few years when that tax code actually hits where it's less than $600 uh, and you have to start paying your taxes on it, not just at point of sale not just sales tax, right? You're going to have to pay 1099 taxes on it. And that's going to hurt a lot of people. And it's already very expensive to actually offload your cards. Oh, yeah. I mean, when eBay bought TCG Player and they evened the 
um, fee structure to 13%. And then you have to figure out your own shipping. It's well, actually, I think they just increased the, the standard shipping. Oh, I think it went from 99 cents to a dollar 25 or something. It, you can standard put free shipping. It's just you can. that you have to eat it yourself, no matter if it's. I'm just saying that the standard shipping and, and the U.S. Post Office keeps raising its rates. It's just yeah. very expensive yeah. nowadays. And it wasn't that long ago because I got 35 cent stamps in, in my drawer. <laughs> it wasn't. But maybe a decade ago, it was 35 cents to mail something. And now it's, you know, much more expensive. So I don't even know what the current postage stamp is because I only get forever stamps. And, and I get the forever stamps because they've been raising the price of stamps so rapidly that I don't want the I don't want to have to do the crazy postage stamp math, you know, on the so back of a napkin. 1851 you could get it at as low as one cent for a stamp <laughs> and then you just see it's you know steadily increased 1981 it was 20 cents so i was born see, in 87 in the early 2000s it was still like 37 cents yeah yeah the year i graduated high school 2006 it was 39 cents for a post stamp i remember growing up it was about 32 cents um, and that it increased and increased and increased, and now it's sixty eight cents for a stamp. Yeah, that's it's just. I mean, it's an exponential. I, I'd like I, I'd like to see that on like like graph, mm. or you know, that would be interesting. But <laughs> tell me that's not the graph. <laughs> well, and that doesn't even have the sixty eight cents on it. Right, yeah, yeah. In oh, there's one that says stamp prices versus overall there with the golden blue line on the bottom one. No, on the, on the right, yeah. <laughs> That's stamps versus overall inflation. Yeah, versus CPI, yeah. So that, you know, wow. Okay. So yeah, again, I mean, this, this last part here, as you can see, I mean, so much of the economy right now is in a very scary parabolic arc of, to be quite frank, things getting incredibly expensive to the point where I was having this conversation with the guy that owns the house I live in, and he was talking about how difficult things are for him and his family. And same thing for me. It There seems to be a large divide right now, making things so that the poor are poor and the people that weren't really poor are just regular poor. It, it's just hard to get by for everybody at this point. And personal. Opinion. Well, I wouldn't say everybody because I think there is a divide, and I think it's absolutely erasing the middle. Yeah, and yeah. and that's why I've been, you know, kind of in a race to, you know, tread the water to to be in the upper part because, yeah, I think it's going to be when you have a bigger gulf, it's harder to swim across it, right? And. And I think that's what's going to happen with the economic divide here is that it's going to and, and, and understand this, folks. The middle class is an invention over the last hundred years. It's only ever existed in the last hundred years hmm. and mainly here in the United States. You know, it, it, this it was a social experiment here in the United States. And there was a lot of, you know, a lot of it has to do with World War Two and blowing up all the factories around the world. We we're the only one left standing, blah, 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 blah. So there was a great degree of wealth that we didn't even understand. So on and so forth. and with globalization meaning that we are now truly a global society <coughs> uh, so much more so than at any point in human history things move rapidly on a global pace oh yeah so, the shift the ebbs and flows of markets in general and also like well, even, even manufacturing trend. manufacturing yeah. can shift from country to country in Instead of, you know, centuries, now it's hey, what within a year, capital. right? That if, if it's that much cheaper to go set up manufacturing in Zimbabwe, they'll do it. And the problem yeah. with that is there's no regression. Like, we lost it, went to China. China's losing it to India. India will also, because what's happening is you're spreading the wealth, right, back yes. around the entire world. 
You yep. understand before the wealth got all gathered up here in the United States, you're talking about monarchies and very elite, like 1% yeah. of the people had like 95% of the money around the world. And in the United States, we really flattened that mushroom out, you know, and, and there was this thing called the American dream, the middle class. Well, yeah, it, it, it is a dream. That's why they call it a dream and dreams don't last. Right. And yeah. it will get back to some form of, you know, clearly the, you know, that's what the whole communist and Marxist thing was. Is let's spread out the money, but clearly that just doesn't work because you end right. up having some and, yeah. at the top that takes yeah. all the money for themselves and their buddies. Yeah. And you kind of have that a little bit in capitalism, but at least you can get yeah. a piece of the pie or fight for it where you can't right. in monarchy yeah, yeah. Everybody and, can make some communist yeah. dictatorships. Yeah. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, we're we're rolling back into like a socialist type of country where Uncle Sam is becoming everybody's mommy and daddy and giving them everybody, you know, taking money from people that have more and give it to people that have less. That's socialism, folks. And 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 it always ends up in the same spot. You always end up with What's tyrannical dictators at the top. It, it, the the issue is though they're not taking money from the people that have most and giving it to people that have least. The people that have the most have figured out ways for them to take none. And I oh yeah no it's it it in this in this particular case it's just absolutely sapping those that were you know trying to climb up into the upper echelons. And you're right. Um, and the more money you have, the more you can avoid taxes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Because yep. you have the yep. means to figure out how to do that. You don't have to pay attention. You pay somebody to do it for you. Right. But yeah. what I mean is they're taking it from people that have money and giving it to people that have none. And that's that's what that means. Um, and, and that's I think essentially just erasing the middle class. A, a funny, a, not, a, it seems as though Wizards of the Coast has done something almost completely different with their product lines. Is that they're taking all of the value out of all of the cards and giving it to fewer and fewer and fewer. You know, now it's but they're not. Only a, you see a what they're doing? No, cards. they're taking. See, they're taking. <laughs> that's what it appears to be, right? But what they're actually doing is they're siphoning off through reprinting and pushing a product the value that is in people's collections that have been gathered for 20 years it won't take long to siphon it off they're already running out i love you too miss sherry vegas but they're siphoning off the value in people's collections they're siphoning off the value in people's boxes that are sitting stored they're siphoning off the value of lgs's that are holding on the product and distributors that are holding on the product and they're profiting from that watsi is but only for a short time because you're going to drain it to the point where you know this card is worth what we say it's worth right and if you if you chase all the people out of the secondary market because you're just eliminating it and making it worthless well then your product ultimately will have no value and that's unfortunate and they're putting it in their pocket now what they've done to, to at this point they're they're sort of running out of reprint equity so what you're talking about is they're yeah, making these super chase cards that put it in the hands of just right. a couple people, but that's far, far less money yeah. that the public has, and far more money that Watsi has. And I think that's part of their current market plan is that as they have a quicker release schedule, as they put out set after set, and it becomes quicker and quicker that they do it, they're going to put more powerful cards, more powerful cards in almost every single set commander chase cards things built almost singularly for modern the the most pushed things we've ever seen and because they're going to be coming out so quickly they'll have more things to put in reprint sets i think that that is going to be their three to well six and, and you're right that's part of what i've been saying the, the, the power creep right they have they have two options yeah. power creep or you know serialized cards but i think even the public is becoming much more aware that hey serialized serialized, serialized cards, cards, are just, cards. <laughs> that they're just yeah they're not that great rudy keeps saying oh people love serialized cards yeah to an extent but that doesn't push enough of the product mm. right because do you realistically think if you buy a box you're going to get a serialized card no matter For what shit, the box no. no no so are no. you people used to buy cases of things yeah People used to that you know the people yeah. that used to buy pallets may now be buying a case. The people that yeah, used to buy a case know, uh, may now be buying a box. Section. 
is is anybody that's here live with us or you know after the video is up are any of you buying boxes to chase after serialized cards are you getting into an entire case of collector boxes so that you can get yourself a a one out of 250 card from the new set like is is that something you're actually spending thousands of dollars on yeah i i agree with richie that it, it's it's a very short term it's a gimmick is what i what i call it and many things that they're doing whether it's a super pooper foil version or a serialized version those are gimmicks right and and creating new cards to chase after is going after a, a, an ever shrinking audience that wants to chase them the unfortunate part yeah. is i believe that they've chased out most of the collectors serious collectors they've chased out um, uh, to to my knowledge basically all investors um and and it's it's unfortunate um i don't know that there's a way out of this death spiral you know it's like they're in a they're they're playing in a flat spin here and i don't know if they can pull it out of it i i'm surprised at how well it's doing financially again i still hold to the the idea that within five years you're going to see sales drop through the floor mm. people just well, think they that it, it might well just be due to a market in general is wider than ever there are more people than there ever have been we broke eight billion sometime last year in 23 i think it was and it just is an ever-growing older population because of how time works and the people that have been around are much more exposed to some of the crossover ips as much as they're distasteful universes beyond do seem to bring people in and sell product on top of that when you have people like post malone who's a reasonably large figure in non-magic the gathering circles that's probably where his largest exposure is is in younger generation you know the z's or a's or whatever the hell it is nowadays people born in like 2000 right when you have somebody like post malone buying a two million dollar magic card talking about how it's one of his favorite things to do outside of making music that's huge and the amount of people coming into the game i think is more so a byproduct of the branding itself and not current choices that the heads of the company are steering towards it it's worrisome for me because things look like they're going great and i don't believe it's because of choices that they are making now um well you know time will tell time will tell time will tell if i'm a complete idiot but it doesn't make sense when you look at the the, the speaking of the, time, the, time. <laughs> if, if you look at, at at the price in general of most cards and if you watch just the you know like the uh the the market watch segments from matt caster and and uh i check oh, them out every day at least one a day so what's the other I one two three channels i watch John, uh legends and heroes is that mm -hmm. what he is um then Anthony anyway, over at MTG Box Analysis does a great breakdown. You see the cards more going down. The graph yeah. tends to go down, not yeah. up on almost every card. And it, um, it's funny because, you know, I head over to MTG Stocks, not a sponsor, want a sponsor. They're great. Um, and I check out a lot on what's movement there. And much like a lot of stock sites, you can see what the trend is over the last week. So you can see if overall the set is going up or down. And it's interesting how few sets seem to go up. Interesting in a sad way. Well, and, and it's and, and they tend to only go up during a, the, the early parts of their life cycle. And then over time, they just... Which is yeah. the reverse of what you used to see, where they would slowly go up over time. In, in any case, um, we'll see where it goes. Um. Yeah, and only one person on the planet gets to enjoy the one of one ring. So to everybody else, it's two not a real did. thing. Come on, two people did, Bob. That dude okay. in Canada that pulled it and sold it for two million dollars in Post Malone. I wonder if it. he's already broke. It's usually oh, the way yeah. it goes. Don't they say that like winning the lottery shortens your life by like sixty five percent? Like on no, average, not, yeah. 
Like no, no it doesn't short your life by that much, but they people tend no, to be no. broke within a couple of years. Yeah. Um, I think it's on average, if you win the lottery of a million dollars or more, it will shorten your life on yeah, average by sixty five percent. Just because, but this like, is far from like finding the happy in 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 games. <laughs> it's like I want to go. I don't know this. about that. Come on, Bob. If I could play a scratcher ticket and I win a million dollars, I just found the fucking happy. What's up, Toast? Uh, you know, speaking of happy and in games, the the the, the 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 crowbar with the scope on it, um, reminds me of Zombicide. But I'm looking forward to the the Ursula's thing, the Ursula's PVE you know, group, uh, game, uh, experience. And, you know, that, that's sort of my new happy coming up that I, I heard Louie and, 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 oh, Josh and George over on, uh, may the zoo be with you talking about whether or not the first chapter should be reprinted. My answer is no, I don't think it should be. It was reprinted. It got down below the scalper prices. And at some point you just have to let things appreciate for a healthy game if they keep reprinting it over and over again um i would say one more reprint maybe because the boxes have reached 300 dollars again have they the first chapter these louise you must be joking no come on no or 300 again they were like 225 last week when we talked about this shit no not last week it's been it's been since like 300 yeah. you're not 299.99 the fuck out of here no we yeah we were like right in this dip oh well it's still 250s damn unopened but yeah don't yeah just like i okay yep. dual brand and hey everybody uh you know not not to make our stream any shorter but uh dual brand's gonna have his you know first stream of the month there i i like trying to get pat out of here early to go check out dual brains guilty pleasure myself i like going and checking it out but um i don't i don't think that they should be reprinting that all the time like at what point do they stop reprinting the first chapter but to be fair it hasn't even been a year folks like it's already jetted up to 400 at release and then dropped all the way back down to like 140 something and then here we are four months later and it's already back up to 300. So maybe one more reprint, but I would yeah, say pump the brakes point, at that yeah. point. Yeah. I mean, right. 155 and, is what we have on graph here. But as Josh says, you know, all the time, this, this is so inaccurate and a yeah, big shout out to Josh over at hometown TCG. What up, dude? Um, he, in all honesty, the data he gathers from TCG player is better than the data on TCG player. So it's almost <laughs> worth, like, no no joke. Well, it is worth the $5 a month just as a content creator because this is bullshit. Like, we saw lower prices. We can go back to footage that we created from these time periods and get more accurate footage than what they're displaying here. No, I've so been paying attention. Really that, that is right. I think, you're, I think your memory is slightly faulty that it hasn't been around uh, 225 since like uh, early February, maybe. Well, I mean, just stuff like what we're seeing right here. Okay. $300, right? All these have been going at $300 since yeah. 4 6. All right. The entire day here. This doesn't show 4 6. Okay. So like it has data from today and it doesn't even show today's data. It's just poorly collected. Okay. But I mean it's it's better than nothing, right? It is. I, I'll and say I that. think that's and... that's going to be sadly my opinion, I worry on Ursula's return is better than nothing. Oh, thank you, Twitter. We are, we're so bad at that. Yeah, please hit the like and subscribe and do all the YouTube right. thingy type stuff, share it, whatever. <clears throat> um but I, regardless of whether it's it's good or bad data, it's something. And it, it can at least be directionally correct. Um, meaning if it's not exact, that, that's not what TCG player is there for. They're there to sell stuff, not to do accurate product tracking for you. 
Yeah. Um, what I don't like in that is that they don't include the shipping in it. So you can get some really misleading data in it. Um, mm. you know, cause some of the sales include shipping. Some of them don't, I think they should combine shipping and the sale price so that you get a better, um, transactional right. I mean, something like this. But, oh, 64 cents plus a dollar 22 shipping. <laughs> it's not that, a 64 cent card. It's a $2 that, card. <laughs> that's 66% increase in overall price. That's not a good buy at that point. Yeah. But my, my, my point with all that is, is that it has to, for the first chapter of where we get lost in the weeds to simply reprint it because demand is so high i don't think that's the best idea i think a better thought would be if it doesn't exist on store shelves and and i don't know where that's being tracked you know and and in all reality it's because of that card right there that you told me to sell it like eight hundred dollars um yeah. i still think at the time when i said it it was a good I think that that was the what? right take at the time. <laughs> and at this point, in any stock, um, whether it was a buy or a sell, I think if we were to look at anything three months later, we would always have that hindsight is twenty twenty. My sure. My cousin always talks to me about Bitcoin in the early 2000s. And that's that's his, you know, lost. Well, what, I, I mean, I, I still want to stay on, on this this train of thought here. Um, that no, simply reprinting it because it, it it's going up. So let's say they reprint it, right? <laughs> this can't be right. Twenty eight hundred dollars. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, um, but simply because it, you know it it it's at this price point. Let's say they printed and it goes back up again i don't think that should necessarily be the only guiding light as to when they do a reprint at some point they have to get on with the next sets and push the next sets so that people yeah collect those as well and if you just keep reprinting and reprinting um right the i think ultimately you end up hurting the yeah the, the yeah the game I, I think that's a that's a great take, honestly, Bob, because if they go back and they continually reprint some of these earlier sets, it does two things negatively for the product at large is one. People aren't focusing on the new thing coming out, which increases growth. You know, it, it continues the movement of the game, adds more mechanics. People are more engaged with it. And it will also further stifle the collectability market of the older sets if they go back and continually reprint them, which is what we're seeing. I mean, we've got a couple of pack openers here in channel. As we continue to reprint stuff, you don't want to go back and get those earlier sets. So why would you buy Modern Horizons 1 when all that shit's been reprinted over again? And... As long as they stay away from reprinting cards, those older sets will be worthwhile. I, I mean, I think it, it, you're right. It, it has a couple of negative side effects. So could they stand one? Can it stand one more reprint? Sure. Yeah. Should they do it? Probably. Not um, I my my opinion is no. And if they do, it should be a very limited reprint and it should be allocated to stores that are holding tournaments. But that season's already over, right? That that tournament season's already over for the first chapter. And where honestly, you know what I would you know what I would say yes to for it being reprinted? Uh going into the future and probably for a long time, only at Disney parks. So there's about 150 boxes, give or take, right now. So I think that there's certainly availability. I mean, that's sure. not a lot, but that's also not a little at the same time. And I like that idea, like you were saying, is have it location specific. If you want to be able to get that, go to a Disney park. And blessed be the 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 
TCG stores, the local LGSs, as Moxman says, that are around those areas. I mean, if you well, I, I think here, that by right? showing solidarity to Disney and only making the product available at Disney parks, mm -hmm. they're driving up revenue by increasing, you know, uh, park attendance. It gives Disney something exclusive with their own IP. Right. And it will still drive people to go in there. It'll still oh, sell product through their stores. So yeah, I, I, I think, think that, that that's, but that's the kind of thing that I would look at, you know, not just reprint it because of price so that all the Timmies can get their cards for 25 cents. No, that's, that's not healthy for a TCG. Right. If you missed out when it was $140 a box, well, kind of shame on you. If you come along later, that's sorry. That's the arrow of time at work. None of us can go back and buy, you know, Bitcoin at 50 cents a piece either. Yeah. Shit just moves forward. <laughs> you know, it, that's the that's the nature yeah. of things. Yeah. And that's also why you should be saving money. You know, that's 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 what the if you're listening to wealthy people right now, what they're telling you is start hoarding your cash. Yeah. Because if things go down, if we start having a deflationary period, and people are desperate to sell things for money because they just can't afford to live. That's when you get to buy your bulldozer for a thousand dollars. That's when you get to buy a house that was a half a million dollars for a hundred thousand. I'm gonna get That's my bulldozer when... and armor plating super cheap. But you you understand what I'm saying? That that if you're not stashing money right now, when the opportunities <laughs> come along, when things are at a lower price, you know, Richie, then... it's funny you say that. Because realistically, through <laughs> the sites and shit like that, you could get an entire starter pack in a little proxy thing. You could randomize that. That would be like a whole thing. It's, it's almost worth it, Bob. That would be a fun but, little you know, I, I, But what I'm saying is like just because people don't pull the trigger when it's an opportune time. Yeah. There are a lot of things in life I would like to go back and buy cheap. Uh, you know, I, you guys are way too young to remember, but IBM stock was that a long time ago when I was young. Mm. Um, and then you had, you know, Amazon and Apple, and I mean, even lots Tesla. of other things that came I mean, along. Tesla in my, my trading lifetime, I, I recommended very hard with a couple of friends I do, uh, trading with, uh, Tesla early on, um, you know, early 2010, stuff like that. I've been a huge fanboy of it for 15 years at this point and um if i had listened to some of my own market advice i would have seen two splits already you know i i have friends that have gotten you know new shitty cars because of some of that advice and i think that's something to take in to, to heart is that there will be more times coming up that we will look back on and say wow such opportunity existed and it always will i've heard a number of motivational speakers talk about opportunity is like the ocean some suckers bring a spoon the smart people bring a fucking bucket and it never runs out and it comes in day after day opportunity will roll upon these shores evermore and that is not just like a saying that's how it works is it, it we both know that as we put more and more money into like smart index fund moves, there's opportunity every single day coming forward. So it's great to look back on TCG products and stuff that's coming out now. You know, I'm so glad I got into fallout early like I did because it's one of those opportunities. And I want to, you know, hopefully give that back out to some of our community. But as we go forward, you got to make sure not to get suckered into some stuff too. You know, well, and you also have to have the discipline to have that capital is what people call it. And if you really look yeah. at what that word means, that'll make your gaming life so much more enjoyable so that you do have three hundred dollars for that volcanic island when the dude's desperate enough that walks in the game right. store. Yeah, to just, yeah. OK, I'll buy it for three hundred bucks. Yeah. You know, that that's that's not being predatory. That's being judicious with your money it's being smart with your money and having it available when you want to buy a thing be patient yeah. save up 
don't just get the latest hot thing. I know that's not like the sexy thing to say out there for people that just want to crack packs all the time. Um, you know, that that's unfortunate. And I don't know what to say. I don't buy into that. I don't lean into that. Um, <laughs> all the sealed around me is just ri ridiculous at this point that I've had to stop buying on, of anything, even Lorcana. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do for Ursula. I'm definitely going to try to get at least like four of the PVEs. Which might be like two hundred bucks. I'm expecting, um, and that's and when I think of that, it's not like oh, I'm doing this for an investment. I wonder it's, what that price point's going to be. In all honesty, I don't know. I hope it's going to be around fifty bucks. I don't think um, it'll be terribly expensive. I mean, let's take a quick look at what we get for. I mean, that's the Illuminators Trove booster packs. Okay, so you're getting your starter, starter decks. Back. The Illumineers Trove. Okay. Nope. Okay. So you're getting one oversized card. Okay. That's the item up here. Yep. Uh, 50 card deck. So that's about the price of a starter deck. Two pre built decks. Those are two more starter decks. $20 a piece. So let's go on the high side. 20 bucks a piece for these two. That's six, uh, 40 right there. You're getting one more deck, so we're up to about 60 bucks. You're getting a play mat. A I, don't think other... it's, I don't think it's a real play mat. I think it's a paper play mat. You're probably right. It's it's almost certainly this item up here because the yeah. play mat that comes, air quote, play mat that comes with the starter, starter deck, deck is bullshit. Yeah. It's just paper. Yeah. Yeah. So this. Probably so that would be a golden opportunity, right? That would be that would be like a hit opportunity if they made a play map specifically for oh my god this Illumineers yeah. quest, right? Yeah, I'd buy it for like twenty five bucks. That the you know, nice that they have right here on the front of it. You know, this nice dark purple and black of Ursula and her inklings with the um, heroes coming. Well, I mean, up I mean, with the, you know, with the separate areas for this specific version. Yep. You know, I'm sure they're going to have special areas on the playmat don't forget that that loot pack that's in there that gold foil loot pack for the winner yep you get one uh let's see one secret, secret victory, victory card. card i think that that is okay i love this that is just, this is love just me being me this is the the marketing side of pat that right there the secret victory card sealed in this gold pack I could see that alone going for fifty bucks. Just well, here's because. here's what I see: a golden yeah. opportunity for them yeah. is to come out with a booster box of loot packs. So on what, each playthrough, you yeah. can have a new one, right? Oh, and yeah. then charge something stupid yeah. like two dollars and fifty cents for one card. You know what I mean? And and we've and, talked about that before. Um, you know, to anybody that's part of our Discord for Commander Raids, one of the things we had talked about was the the marketing side of the game. You know, how you could make it an actual product. Uh, yeah, this is how you make it a product. And to have it so you beat Commander Raids and then everybody opens up a pack and it's it, it has specialty cards that for some reason you can only get after that, you know, a, a a new thing that we've made for Commander Raids, whether it be an emblem for the next one that you start or some tricked out card, custom card that we made just for you guys. So I think that this is a beautiful design space. And if they do this first one right, there could be a huge market for this. I sure. think this could become the the middling, the the muddling of both trading card games and board games because of the, the cooperative. Oh, yeah. Muddling? But, but here, here, here's where I would go even a step farther. I say that that card that would be in there should be available in the set in general, but it just either has a particular treatment or a particular stamp that says, I am a secret victory card you know that it has some sort of moniker on it you can tell that you got that one from a victory pack 
See, for me, I'd kind of like if it were only available in a special line of product that was only worth having if you were playing in the multiplayer uh, PVE. I, I can see that, but that's going to piss the audience off, right? Just It just would, but it would also be one of those things where it's like, well, what do you care about a jeweled lotus if your commander is three different colors? See, five see different colors. Watsy's already ruined you, and this is where you keep short-circuiting with Matt. The collectors would be mad. Yeah, but as Watsy says, fuck the collectors. Okay, this ain't Watsy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and I and, think and they haven't fucked it up yet, point. like Watsy. So that's a good point. Again, because, like like you're saying, there Ravensburger is totally looking at this different than Wizards of the Coast has. In their their draft booster box, you can find a card that's worth up to twenty eight hundred dollars, apparently. In in their only item, like their 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 main line item, it, it's like the old school inventions and shit. Wizards is totally going away from that. You have to spend so much to get into it. So yeah, you make a great point, Bob. But I I think that that stamp would would totally fit in with the collector mentality that it's a special version of it that it you know mm. it it it's it and it would only affect collectors. It wouldn't affect anybody else, right? so i think that that's i think that would be a wise idea but I, what i would really love to see is that you know you could recharge that there um i don't know if everybody out here i don't even know if people are asleep yet there are games out there called legacy games in board games like pandemic legacy and clank legacy and that's sort of a popular thing and what the legacy means is that you play through your board game one time and you're tearing up cards that are shipped from the factory you're putting stickers on on your board you're you're writing oh. on cards oh. and writing on the board and so you're altering states of your board game so it's kind of unique when you get back to play through again it'll be a different board game than most anybody out there who has even if you and i both have pandemic it would play differently for both of us because we'd have a different version of it now they have what's called recharge packs that have those cards that you tore up they have new stickers to put over top of the stickers you put on the board to reset your board state um and i would like to start seeing some of that in in card games in in tcg ccgs uh, i don't know how you could incorporate that but i think that the loot packs lend to that idea of recharging your board game this special version of it so that you can play through it again and each person has an opportunity to win that secret victory card each time but they're going to have to come up with some, you can't just keep buying a copy of the game every time you want to get one of those secret victory cards. If you right. do, you, you got my mind racing, Bob. I'm definitely in a very creative zone right now. I'm thinking of like a, two different ways of doing this. Um, number one, risk, like the, my original design space, right? If instead of stars only giving you a certain number of troops, you get a different slew of reinforcements you have foot soldiers instead of cavalry you actually get tanks and they have like a minus one for armor rating and then you get nukes nukes actually destroy all of the units and the tile that used to exist and then like every five turns a new piece of land is added but it has a modifier of having fire because it's a meteor falling from the sky something like that and it's physically altering the board that you're playing on like if monopoly they foreclosed baltimore place that shit got wrecked it's down forever nobody gets to own it or collect rent that's a very interesting design space and something similar to that was in double masters 22 with the only new card they introduced with the cryptic spires that as you're drafting the set you can choose two colors and it can add either of those. If you had something like a in in D and D, you have like a, a wand that has charge counters on it. Imagine if you had like a soul ring that you could tap, add three mana, but it takes one charge counter off. And you gotta like plunk a hole through that shit. 
like something like you said similarly enough to uh damage the card in enough way to impact it add a sticker to it do something to demarcate it as having been used to use a, a charge off it that that's a, a very interesting permanent and physical way to get people to be unable to use the card or item and have to rebuy it because with commander you buy a deck and use it forever and ever and ever and you can you can trade it and it has the same intrinsic value but if i have a cryptic spire with two hole punches in it it's it's used up you know a, a half charged ring is a third of the value it's very... I, I've, I've thought about that space for cards and i know how to do it because they did it in um world of warcraft tcg where they had scratch off on it they had a scratch off code but they can they've proven yeah. that you can put scratch off on a card now imagine that you have to scratch it off like you can't even just preserve it if you want to use the card because you don't know what ability it has underneath that scratch off yeah you have to scratch it off to see what ability it gives you right and you can only scratch off let's say one right and let's say you have an option for three different places that you could scratch off Oh my God, um, Sakashima of a thousand yeah. faces, and it has a thousand different things that it could be under sure. the scratch off area. Like modal cards are perfect for this, but then you could have right. different options. Like now, now we're like in, in Watsi's boardroom and we're giving him free ideas, but <laughs> really, <laughs> really good ideas that they'll never fucking take, Bob. That's the issue. But I mean, I see a lot of places that they could go and be, you know, creative that they don't have to keep reprinting effing cards man yeah, you know, yeah adding new value true new value to the game rather than oh, don't worry this one wasn't ruining what's, what's yeah. out there uh you, you know and it's 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 just frustrating that you know they can't have the creativity to do things that would be exciting for lots of people or at least um and, and, and that's what i'm yeah. so excited for for ravensburger because this was a complete surprise for me completely caught off guard that they were going to come up with the, save. Same. You know, even so much so that we even had a, a, a person in our, our Discord say, hey, here's a, and I feel bad. I haven't looked at it yet. I need to do that. Maybe hey, I'll do that. It out. It's actually pretty decent. I just haven't gotten back to him yet. You know, it, it, I've, I've had that idea for a long yeah. time, you know, that I wanted to do a Commander Raids for Lorcana. And I, I would definitely be down for playing it if if, if he or she uh, wants to. Um, I don't have any, like, decks made up. Um. And so long as it's, you know, a pre-con deck, I have some pre-con decks that I could use. But, uh, you know, I, I think that that's where games need to start going is to, you know, in the theme of this show, hey, how about they come up with some making things fun and exciting for us rather than rehashing the same old, same old, and, you know, just more gimmick, more gimmick, and, rather than something that's uniquely, truly new and fun. Um, and, and I think that there's plenty of of space it's just limited by their creativity i mean i i'm so very happy with this for for ravensburger i hope they keep going and i hope they keep surprising me i hope they keep innovating and coming up with new things i, I think they're going to need to if they want to try to compete in the tcg space they can't just keep doing what magic and Yu-Gi-Oh and pokemon have already done for three decades they need to you know do something new and different and uh, you know, this was an exciting, refreshing thing for me. It's where I found my my happy recently. Uh, you know, I think it's the third week in a row we've talked about it now. Um, as far as like magic goes, there's no offense. There's nothing super <laughs> exciting. I'm just sad in the face that they, you know, keep staying on that reprint train over and mm. over and over again. Um, I mean, they are making new cards. Um, sure, I... but that's never stopped. <laughs> it's true but they so, haven't let off the reprint gas i mean they, they still shove it in every place that they possibly can yep and yeah and, and uh, can, uh, one of the most recent reprints uh is one of my most hated cards in all of magic the gathering that's right boys gals everything in between mind slaver is getting a reprint one of the most that's a fun card it's the like one one of the most everybody fun likes not playing magic when they're playing magic oh yeah the only thing better than me playing magic is if you take my turn instead and i don't play magic that would be way cooler 
Yeah, I yeah, that's yeah. I'd be like, nope. So I can't imagine that that standard format's going to be fun for a lot of people. Mm. Um, that's what be- is going to be fun for a lot of people is if you go over and check out Dual Brain and yes, it will four thousand subscriber celebration. That's right, live right now over on Dual Brain is four K. So big shout out, big ups to Ed and uh, I think Bob. We're probably going to head over there, aren't we? I, I am. I'm going to head upstairs. I'm going to shut off my uh, my 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 studio down here in the basement. And I'm going to go up there and show some solidarity for Mr. Dual Brain. And then I'm going to have to take a walk. So thank you so much for everybody showing up out there. We always appreciate, truly do appreciate the time that you spend with us on Saturday evenings. We love your support. And, and we hope that you find things that are fun for you. Um, and, and maybe not even just magic, but in, in video games and board games, card games, or just life in general, and, and try to think creatively, you know, because uh, if, if you can come up with creative things, just like we did with Commander Raids, you know, you can you can make fun for yourself and for others, right? And you never know what's going to take off like a rocket. Maybe someday yeah. Commander Raids will. Um, I enjoy it. I'm going to try out that that Lorcana PVE thing that... Uh, Commander raids that 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 the uh, Discord member came up with. I'm definitely going to take a look at that, and uh, hopefully you all. Well, we love you guys too. We really do. If if it wasn't for you guys, we would just be sitting here talking on Discord to each other. Um, so we we really are nothing without an audience, and we appreciate you guys immensely. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it was a phenomenal time getting to chat with everybody. So thank you again for coming this evening. And until next time, you've been awesome. And we've been Cardboard Odysseys.